بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد From the characteristics of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is that they are just with everyone and that they do not lie and distort and that they are just and truthful even with regards to those people who distort and change and blemish the religion of Islam the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of the heavens and earth and i wanted to clarify something very important for example some people claim the jamaat al ahbash the group that follows who they believe is Allama Abdullah Al Harari Al Habashi from the province in Ethiopia known as Harar They consider him a great imam and I just wanted to clarify something very important as some people believe that they are not a Sufi group some people who even claim to follow them are and refuse to acknowledge the fact that he was Sufi so I thought it was very important that we clarify this and we go to the statements of Abdullah Al Harari himself or we go to his those ulama or those people who are considered scholars after him who are part of his sect and his group and in this series of clarifications regarding this jamaat we will deal with all of these topics so some people claim the jamaat al ahbash are not sufi and that ahl sunnati wal jamaah has lied about this group however a person who claims this is not true or not being truthful in fact or in fact this person or perhaps we might say that this person is either ignorant or they're lying or covering up the creed of this sect since ahl sunnati wal jamaa claims jamaat al ahbash is sufi it is upon them to prove this claim and this is from justice and i personally testify to the fact that they are sufi as i've been to hera ethiopia where the leader of this sect is from and i was personally handed a book which i still have which is a refutation of sheikh al islam ibn taymiyah and muhammad ibn abdul wahhab rahimahum allah and where abdullah al harari claims that they are uh people of ilhad people who have left the religion of islam people who are no longer muslims that they have apostated from the religion because they have the creed of ahl sunnati wal jamaah this is what abdullah al harari claims so this sect that has these claims when we look at the detail and on the back of this book it details the creed or it details where he sought knowledge the people he took his knowledge from abdullah al harari al habashi and from amongst the scholars we will look to what they say about him what those people who are followers of his and what he himself claims on his own books you will find this speech and this is from their website al ahbash they say mashayikh al allama sheikh abdullah al harari rahimahullah fi tariq sufia this is what they say they say the scholars of the allama the sheikh abdullah al harari may allah have mercy upon him is on the 
various paths of Sufi, various Sufi tariqa. I will give you the original Arabic text so there will be no confusion because the most authentic information that's going to be brought about this group can only come from the Arabic language. The most authentic text. Why? Because then you will go to the source which is from the mouth of Abdullah Herari and the mouth of those people who follow him and their group. And the asl of this group is based in Lebanon. Is based in Lebanon. And you have them spread around the, the, around the world. However, it's very imperative that we deal with the Arabic language and then we translate. And for those who know Arabic, then you're in a more privileged position to be able to verify this speech. So they begin to say on their website, Al-Ahbash, they say, أخذ إجازة بطريقة رفاعي من شيخ محمد علي الحريري الدمشقي. So the first thing is they say that he studied and he took his ijaza. You know, he took his some of the permission to teach on the path or the way of the Rafa'iya, which is a Sufi path, and it was from Sheikh Muhammad Ali Al Hariri Al Damashki from Damascus. Wa khilafatu min Sheikh Abdurrahman Al Sabsibi Al Hamawi wa Sheikh Tahir Al Kayali Al Hams. Al-Hamasi. These are other people who he took his knowledge uh, from who are also from Sufi Tariqah. But let's go to, back to the text. وَأَخَذَ تَرِيكَ الْقَادَرِ مِنْ شَيْخْ الطَّيْبِ الْدَمَشْكِ So he also uh, embarked upon the Tariqah or path Al-Qadri. So this is another Sufi path. So now we have two Sufi paths for those people who are ignorant ignorant to this fact, now they have knowledge that he indeed took his knowledge from Sufis and was in fact a Sufi. First, from the Rafa'i, he also, he has ijaza from and and, and, and embarked, when you say akhada tariq, that means he took the bay'ah. That means he took a pledge of allegiance to this tariqah, to this path, the qadri. Wa khilafatu min Sheikh Ahmed al-Badawi al-Sudani al-Mukashafi was Sheikh Ahmed al al Arabini was Sheikh Muammar Ali al Murtadi al Dayrui al Pakistani. So also from a Pakistani Sheikh, and also from a Sudanese Sheikh. And some of these terms that they use, these are terms that are restricted or or terms which are used amongst the Sufis for their people who they believe are awliya, who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and people who they believe sometimes to the extent of disbelief, they leave the fold of Islam because they believe that these people can uh, know and see the unseen, when in fact the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, who the Muslims believe were the last Prophet and Messenger, alayhi salatu wa salam, could, did not contain this knowledge, did not possess this knowledge. Then, going back to the text, it says, وَأَخَذَ طَرِيكَ الشَّاذَلِيَ So he also was on the, the, the طَرِيكَ شَاذَلِي مِن, From who? مِن شَيْخْ أَحْمِدْ الْبَصِيرْ فِي الْحَبَشَ So this is also a sheikh in Ethiopia, or was in Ethiopia at the time. وَأَخَذَ نَقْشَبَنْدِيَ مِن شَيْخْ عَبْدُ الْغَفُورْ الْأَثْغَانِ الْنَقْشَبَنْدِي So he also was on the Naqshabandi طَرِيكَ and he took his uh, his elm on that path, on the methodology of the Naqshbandi Tariqa from Sheikh Abdul Ghafoor al Afghani al Naqshbandi. Check it for yourself. Wa khilafa min Sheikh al Muamir Ali al Murtadi al Dayrui al Pakistani. Also from a, a Pakistani Sheikh. Wa akhada khilafa bi Tariqa Sahururudiyah. Al Hashatiya min Sheikh Muamir Ali Al Murtadi Al Dayrui Al Pakistani. Also from a Pakistani Sheikh, he he embarked upon another Sufi tariqa, which 
I have difficult even trying to pronounce this Torika. The Shahid here, the purpose of mentioning this is letting us know that Ahlul Sunnah goes back to the evidences. Ahlul Sunnah is just. We go to the sources. So we went to the sources of their own speech and they let us know that this man, Abdullah Herari, he was on the Rafa'i Tariqah. He also was on the Naqshbandi Tariqah. He was also on the Qadariya. Uh, he was Qadari. He was also... Uh, also he embraced the... Uh, Sahrur, Sahrur Diya, uh, uh path as well. So this was at least four different Sufi tariqas. What about the tariqah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Where do we find in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam these paths? That's what I have a question for. Why would we call ourselves the, all these various names which refer to places or refer to methodologies of particular individuals. But why not follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Isn't this sufficient for us? Isn't this a sufficient for us to believe as Allah believe and his, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, affirmed for us in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Isn't that sufficient for us as Muslims? So we ask these people who have chosen this path, which goes in contradiction to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu that they've taken new names for their group. They even refer to themselves as the Ahbash. Why would you refer yourself to Ahbash and not refer to yourself as Muslims? Or not refer to yourself purely as just Ahl Sunnah, those people who to mesek fi kitabillah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa and adhere to the Sharia as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it and established it for us to follow. But instead they follow a new leader, al hirari and a new methodology, al -ash, uh, the Ashari methodology, because the Ashari methodology was not around in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it is a new methodology which came in the third century Hijriya. Check it for yourself. Check out and find out when Abu Hassan al Ashari, rahimahullah taala, when he lived and when he died. Check it out. Go to the text. Hatta burhanakum in kuntum sadikin. Bring your proof if you are truthful. Tell us where. Give us an understanding where these ideologies play into the context of Islam. This is Allah's religion, and it is, and we are just here to follow, not to innovate, not to add anything else. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Men ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu furad." Whenever, uh, uh, whoever innovates in this matter of ours, then it is rejected. So when we come up with these new names, these new ideologies, these new methodologies, these new madhabs, these new tariqas, Naqshbandi, uh, uh, Rafa'i, Qadri, and other than this, then we have to question ourselves. Where are we on the scale that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to measure and judge things? Where are we on the scale of Islam? Where do we fit in? Are we following what we what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to, to follow? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Not to going to the graves and seeking uh, uh, help and support from the deceased awliya and those people you believe are deceased awliya. Or even the prophets, alayhim after salatu wa salam, they were all sent with what? Lakad ba'na fi kulli ummatu rasulun in ni'budullah wa ijtanibu ta'gud. Were sent to the, the, the messengers, alayhim after salatu wa salam, were sent to every nation to worship Allah and be away from those things worship besides Allah. So that means being away from the dead Naqshbandi sheikhs and not worshiping them, being away from the dead uh, Tijaniya. Uh, ulama, being away from the uh, anyone who's considered an awliya, that we do not worship them. We do not do, make supplication to them. Because as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, he said it, salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi, a dua huwa ibadah. That's an authentic hadith. You'll find it in Tirmidhi. How is it we can refute that evidence and say, no, 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 it's okay, I don't mean to really call the dead, or they're not really dead. I know how they... How, how they are in Barzakh, so maybe my dua will go from them and transfer to Allah. A'udhu billah min dhalika. Wa hawlai al-dhalim. Those are the people who are really misguided. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
by all of his divine names and attributes to accept our good and forgive our evil and give us guidance and give all of us guidance to the straight path to leave innovation and leave those those deviated paths and leave ah, the people of deviation with sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya muhammad